الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفاء أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما أصاب من مصيبة إلا بإذن الله ومن يؤمن بالله يهد قلبه والله بكل شيء عليم إلى قوله تعالى إن تقلد الله قرضا حسنا يضاعف لكم ويغفر لكم والله شكور حليم عالم الغيب والشهادة العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا ألهمنا رشدنا وعزنا من شرور أنفسنا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ربنا نفر قلوبنا بالإيمان واشرح صدورنا للإسلام ووفقنا لما تحب وترضى آمين يا رب العالمين In the previous session, we discussed at length ayah number 11 of Surah Al-Taghabun. A few points should be noted more. Number one, the same subject is discussed in one relatively longer ayah of Surah Al-Hadid. I told you there's a collection of 10 Madani surahs starting from Al-Hadith to At-Tahreem. Five among them start with Sabbaha Lillah or Yusabbihu Lillah. The first one starting with Sabbaha Lillah is Surah Al-Hadith. Sabbaha Lillah ma fi samawati wal lard. And the last one is Surah Al-Taghabun, which we are studying presently. The first ayah was, as you must be remembering, يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ And we find this very subject, مَا صَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْنْ عَلِيمٍ This has been discussed in two ayat, rather three. Of Surah Al-Hadid. مَا صَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِ أَنَّ بْرَاهَا إِنَّ ذَلِكْ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ لِكَيْ لَا تَاسَوْا عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا آتَاكُمْ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ الذين يبخلون ويأمرون الناس بالبخل ومن يتول فإن الله هو الغني الحميد I'll only translate the two ayat at this time. The subject we shall discuss in more detail when we shall be studying Surah Al-Hadid, inshallah. Ma sabam min musibatin. Nothing happens, no affliction, no calamity can happen. Fil ardi wala fi anfusikum. Neither in the earth, nor natural calamity on a wider and larger scale. وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ Nor in your own persons, personal affliction, personal ailment and so on. إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِ النَّبْرَاهَا But it has already been written in the book and that book is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before we make it appear, it appears only at certain time in the time and space complex. But actually in the knowledge of Allah, it was existing from ever. And ذَلِكْ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ And this is very easy for Allah. It might be incomprehensible for you. It might be impossible. It might appear impossible to you. إِنَّ ذَلِكْ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ On Allah and for Allah is very easy. What should be the result of this knowledge? لِكَيْ لَا تَعْصَوْ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ You shouldn't be grieved. 
you shouldn't feel sorry for what you have lost wala tafrahu bima ataakum and don't be over glad very happy on what he gives some money has come to you some gain has come to you something beneficial has occurred for you don't be very happy and something you have lost don't be very much grieved actually from this i want to make one point is absolutely natural that some effect takes place something which is pleasant physically well there will be some effect on human being if something is painful there will be a reaction so the natural or physiological reaction that is absolutely different but to have the grief and sorrow and why this has happened it should not have happened and you know one feels very happy very delighted over delighted on some gain well this you know actually if i place before you the example of a pendulum the pendulum is swinging the more iman you have the less will be the swinging of this pendulum and the more you are away from iman and you are not having the true knowledge the swinging of the pendulum will be great you have some gain and you are very happy the pendulum has gone to that that extreme there's some loss and you are very much grieved the pendulum has gone to that extreme but you know the more and more you have knowledge of the realities of this universe the more and more you have faith in allah subhanahu wa taala the more and more you know that everything that is happening is for me as a test actually this whole life you know which we are passing in this world it is for testing khalaq al maut wal hayat li yabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala if he has given something me he is testing me if he has taken something from me he is testing me so both conditions are of testing so less grief on loss less delight on gain lesser grief on loss lesser delight on gain the more you have iman the more you have the deep understanding the more you have the faith in allah you know the pendulum will you know the swing of the pendulum pendulum will decrease but there will be some you know effect which is physical if something pleasant has happened some you know some sort of delight and if something is or something unpleasant has happened some physical effect some reflex action would take place that is negligible second point is that although we know that whatever has come to me it has come from allah but there are the agencies through which allah subhanahu wa taala has sent me this thing now if a person has committed something wrong it doesn't absolve him from his responsibility he is punishable you you have the right to have kisas that is this other aspect because for social you know life there must be kisas the criminals must be brought in the book they must be punished otherwise you know the whole society will be disrupted wa lakum fil qisas hayatun ya aulil albab for this worldly life and for discipline in this life and for you know a system a discipline you need punishment also you have to punish the culprits even the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam rahmatan lil alamin he punished he punished the culprits he you know gave the judgment and verdict that the hands of the thief be chopped off he got you know people who had committed adultery you know a person and a, a, a male and a female both stoned to death by the orders of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam although he was all merciful he was rauf ur rahim but you know punishments hududullah they have to be enforced so there should be a balance between this thing what has come to me it is from allah actually but whosoever is there in between 
if he has done something, well, he is responsible. And he will be punished if he has done something wrong. So that punishment or qisas, it is actually a part of the sharia. Now we proceed to the second ayah. As I told you in the beginning, now the two ayat are concerned about what is coming out from us. The deeds and actions. Our eyes seeing something. Our hands doing something. Our feet and legs taking us somewhere. All these are organs with which we are doing something. And Iman should have two effects. Number one, Vatiyu Allah, Vatiyu Rasul. Fain tabalaytum, fain nama ala Rasul yana al-balaam al-mubeen. Whatsoever, what, whatsoever you are doing or committing, no action of yours, no deed of yours, should be contrary to the law and commandment of Allah and His Messenger. Your eyes should not see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden to see. Your hands shouldn't do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden to do. Your feet and legs shouldn't take you where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like you to go. Total action should be within the limits of the Sharia. You have to obey. This is the practical way. You need food. Well, go and earn, work for some, but it should be for halal, through halal means, no haram thing to be taken, nothing to be earned through haram means. You have a sexual urge, well go, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed you to marry, go and marry a woman, but permissible. Certain relations, forbidden. You can't marry your sister. And you can't have any sexual relationship with any woman without marriage. That would be haram. So actually everything that you do, number one, it has to be in conformity with the demands and commands and injunctions and orders of Allah and His Messenger. And the word used is itah, atiyullah wa rasul. This obedience can be forced obedience. But this word, you know, it is ta. Ta means to do with your own inclination. Ta am wa karha. These are the words, you know, which come in opposition to each other. It has to be itah. When you have, when you believe in Allah, now you should obey Him with your own inclination. When you have believed in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you must obey Him. And you should be inclined to obeying Him, not that you are being forced to do it. But we shall discuss inshallah a hadith also, where the other side also has been discussed. But to Sharia, to the commandments of Allah and His Messenger, Regarding whatever is haram, whatever is halal, what is permissible, what is forbidden. You have to obey these rules and you have to obey them with your inclination. Not feeling that you are being forced to do it. If there is that feeling, it means you don't have the real faith in Allah. You don't have the real faith in the, in, in the messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You don't have the real faith that Allah cannot have given us any order which is not beneficial for us. Maybe we, we are not understanding the, the hikmah, the wisdom behind it. But he is al-hakim, he is all wise. He has not made anything haram for us which, is, which can be beneficial for us. Whatever he has declared halal, it, it is in our own interest. Whatever he has declared haram, it is in our own interest. If you have faith in Allah, if you have faith in His Messenger, then this should be your bent of mind. This should be your feeling. Second thing here that must be noted is, 
when this command of obedience comes, it should be a total obedience. Whatever Allah has commanded, the difficulty with us today is that we have divided the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into two parts. Some of them are acceptable to us. Go and pray. Five times a day we are doing it. But he also says, he also commands, an deen establish my deen. Spend whatever you have to establish my deen. Make jihad for my cause. Whose command is it? Is it not from Allah? Praying five times a day, going to Hajj every year. Going for etikaf in the masjid haram every year. But not endeavoring, not exerting yourself, not spending your money and wealth for the establishment of deen of Allah. What is this? You are obeying certain commandments of Allah and disobeying the others. He has declared riba haram. And you are indulging in it. What is it? Who has declared it to be haram? Some lesser Allah? Some smaller Allah? Whose commandment can be ignored? Or the same Allah? He's the same Lord. He commands whatever he likes. Yaakumu ma yurid. It's his prerogative. He has the right to command everything. Allah has declared trading in business as halal, permissible. And he has declared riba as haram, forbidden. Who are you to question him? You believe in your own thinking, your own intellect? Or you believe in Allah? You are to follow your own understanding and argument? Or you have to follow the Prophet? Just analyze what behavior we have today. And that is why, let me quote the ayah, one of the most bitter ayat. Although it was said about the former Muslim Ummah, the Jews, but it is applicable to us hundred percent. Afato minuna bi bazil kitabi wa takfuruna bi baz. Do we want to accept a part of our book, a portion of our Sharia? And reject the other part. There can be no punishment for those who take to this attitude except that they should be put to extreme humiliation in this world. Just note the words. Humiliation in this world. And on the day of judgment, they would be thrown in the worst of the punishments. Allah is not unaware of what you are doing. You can't deceive him by performing Hajj every year, by performing Umrah every year. You can't deceive him. You are performing Hajj from haram money. It is absolutely unacceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So actually, Atiyullah wa Atiyul Rasul, don't think it's a very simple word. You have to take it or leave it. Udhuruf is silme kaafa. You have to take to total, total obedience or just go away. Allah doesn't need you, you need Him. Huwal Ghaniyul Hamid. He is fully self sufficient. He doesn't need anybody, anything. Whether you pray him to him or not, or whether you praise him or not, it's absolutely immaterial for him. He is being praised for everything in this universe, every moment. Everything is praising him. Everything is glorifying him. He doesn't need your glorifying and your praising. He needs something else. 
And you know the subject I touched, a qamatu deen, establish our deen. And for establishing, you might have to risk your lives. If the companions of my Prophet and Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa if they had to sacrifice their lives for establishing the deen of Allah, are your lives more precious than the, the, the lives of Hamza radiallahu ta'ala or Musa bin Umayr radiallahu ta'ala so please note these two points Atiullah wa Atiul Rasul if you have real Iman then you have to obey Allah and the Messenger with your own inclination number two this obedience has to be total Whatever he has declared haram, refrain from it. Whatever he has declared imperative, you have to do it. If he says, Aqimu Salah, well, you have to establish the prayer. If he says, Aqimu Deen, you have to establish the Deen. There's no choice. Every commandment of Allah and His Messenger is to be obeyed. وَإِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ فَإِنَّمَا عَلَىٰ رَسُولِنَا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ and if you turn your backs, you are not ready to listen, or you are not ready to act accordingly, then you must know that the duty of our messenger is only to convey the message to you clearly. He is not responsible for anything more. He will not be asked why such and such and such and such persons didn't accept Iman. Why didn't such and such and such and such persons did jihad? He is not to worry. He is not responsible. You will be held responsible. His responsibility finishes when he has conveyed the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you. تَوَلَّيْتُمْ فَإِنَّمَا عَلَىٰ رَسُولِنَا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ If you turn your backs, you go away. You listen, but don't obey, then no, you must know, you must keep it in your mind that the only duty of our messenger is clear conveying message, conveying the message clearly and plainly. If he has done it, but he has done his job, now you are responsible. Now the other side of this, whatever you are doing, whatever you are endeavoring, The other necessary result of Iman should be Tawakkul only on Allah. What is Tawakkul? To depend on something. To think that He can do the needful for me. This is Tawakkul. Iman tells us there should be no Tawakkul on any person, on anything. Both, please note on no person, on nothing. This water, it cannot by itself quench your thirst. Thirst. It does it only with the permission of Allah. If Allah doesn't allow, you'll go on drinking and drinking and drinking water and your thirst will not be quenched. This food cannot give you energy by itself. It can give you energy, it can prove energy for you if Allah wills so. There is a hadith that every morsel of the food which is passing through your throat, ask the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Should I be a source of energy for this person or should I become a poison for this person? It's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No medicine can cure your disease except with the permission of Allah. That's why you must have seen, you know, at least in our part of the world, old women used to give medicine to children but saying, Allah kafi, Allah shafi. Shafi is Allah, not this medicine. Allah is kafi, we are using medicine. 
because this is the practice of the Prophet use the medicine. We have to use the means, but never depend upon means. Never think that these means, these material means, will bring about an effect and result automatically. No. For every event to happen, the permission and leave comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same thing. Nothing can happen to you without His permission. And you cannot do anything. And nothing will give you the required result. Although it might be physically a law that this has the effect. But never think this cause and effect is not at automatic. There is intervening in between the cause and the effect, the will and permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So tawakkul on Allah and Allah alone. You know, in the beginning of Surah Bani Israel, there's a very beautiful, very profound ayah. What was the essence, some total of the teaching of Torah? وَآتَيْنَا مُوسَ الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلْنَاهُ هُدًا لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ أَلَّا تَتَّخِذُوا مِن دُونِي وَكِيلًا He gave Torah to Moses, made it a guidance for Bani Israel. And what's the essence? What was the sum total of the teaching of Torah? Don't think anybody or anything as wakil for you. Only dependable is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me give you an instance. What happened to the Muslims in the battle of Hunayn? The Muslims were 12,000 in number. Never before that day, 12,000 Muslims were gathered in one army. Because that battle happened just after the victory of Mecca. 10,000 Sahaba marched into Mecca with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam on the 10th day of Ramadan al-Mubarak in the 8th year after Hijrah. And from there 2,000 more, some of them who had accepted Islam after the victory of Mecca, others were still Muslim, but because now, so to say, they were the subjects of Islamic State, so they also joined. So 12,000, the army, 12,000 strong. There came in the minds of some of the Muslims, who can defeat us today? There was a time when we were 313, and a thousand strong army couldn't defeat us. Who can defeat us today? We are 12,000. What happened? You know this Hawazin, this, this tribe, they were very good archers. And they were hiding in the mountains. When the Muslim army came in the valley, there were volleys, you know, of these arrows coming. And there was all panic. People ran away. Some say only 30 Sahaba remained with Muhammad Sallallahu Others say no, about 300. Allama Shibli says 30, his disciple, Allama Sayyid Suleiman Nadvi says, no, 300. But 300 out of 12,000. Just imagine. What a rout. But then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came down of his horse or camel, took the standard in his own hands. He recited Raj for the first time in his life. Anan Nabi Yola Kazim, Anan Abdul Muttalib. I am Nabi, I am the Prophet of Allah. There's no denying the fact. Whether I have 12,000 with me or not, I am the Nabi. And I am the grandson of Abdul Muttalib. I am here. Then he called, Ilayya ya Allah, come to me. Ilayya ya Ashab al Badr, oh you people who are with me in Badr. Ilayya ya Ashab al Shajara, oh you people who gave me the pledge by after his one come to me then people returned and then Allah said you know it is the ayah in Surah Al-Tawbah wa yawma hunanin iz ajabatkum kasratukum what had happened you had become proud of your numbers that we are 12,000 
Now you are, you are depending on numbers, not on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the means, material means. And this is contrary to Iman. Tawakkul should be only on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me bring this point to you. You have to go tomorrow somewhere. The car is ready. The tank is full with the gas. Everything is okay. Never think that you will be able to go unless Allah permits it. وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْنِ إِنِّي فَعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدًا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ Never say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that I will do this tomorrow, but with an additional condition, if Allah permits, if Allah wants, then I'll be able to do it. So whatever is coming out of us, if we are real moment, number one, it should be according to the Sharia, the framework within the limits of the Sharia, within the limits of halal only, not haram. It shouldn't transgress the limits of the Sharia. Atiullah wa atiul Rasul, fa in tawallaytum fa inna ma'ala Rasulin al-balagh al-mubin, and then do whatever you have to do, and you have to do it. I do lahum mustatatum. Use all the means. Tawakkul doesn't mean that you sit down and let Allah do it for you. No, no, do it. Whatever you can do, you have to do it. If you are sparing anything, if you are leaving any stone unturned, you are to blame. Do whatever you can do. But never think that the result depends upon these means, these physical means. The result is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu la ilaha illahu. Allah. He is the only Allah. There is no God with him. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّرِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And the moments should have, they, they must depend, they have trust only in Allah and in nothing else and in none else. Now, I told you, first of all, we were imagining one individual, whatever happens to him and what, what, what acts and deeds are coming out of him. The second level, we are existing in a society and living in a world of matter, in a world of cause and effect. Then we are related. We have blood relations. We have relations of blood and flesh. What should be our attitude if we have real Iman? It's a very strange ayah. Next. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. O you people who believe or profess to believe, إِنَّ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ وَأَوْلَادِكُمْ عَدُوًّا لَكُمْ فَحْسَرُوهُمْ Verily, some of your spouses am willfully ignoring the word wives. In Arabic, زوج means the pair. Husband is the زوج of the wife and wife is the زوج of husband. So the word of the English language, spouses, mostly translated as wives, because generally the address, you know, in Quran is in the masculine gender. So for them, the spouse, spouses are the wives. So you may translate it either way. Some of your spouses or some of your wives and some of your children are enemies for you. Fazaruhum. So beware of them. Be on the alert. Be on the defensive. Be careful. But you know, this min can be tabiziya, it can be bayaniya also. In your spouses, and in your children, there are potential enemies for you. All of them are your enemies, potential enemies. What does it mean? The requirement of Iman is that the love of Allah in your heart should be supreme. While on instincts, you are loving these relations. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has himself put this love and affection. 
in human beings. Had there been no love and affection in the parents for the offspring, how could they have brought them up? If there was no love for the husband in the heart of the wife, or for the wife in the heart of the husband, how could they be? They remain united for the whole of their lives. How could they live together? So these are essential. But now, this love for these creatures, for these men, for your wives and for wives, for their husbands, and for your parents, and for your offsprings, for your sons and daughters, and for your brothers and sisters, and for your, for your nation or tribe, it's a challenge to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you are not on the guard, if you are not careful, maybe at times this love for your wife or love for your son or daughter may take you away from the injunctions of the Sharia. You, find, you want to feed them the best way. You want to fulfill their desires. You want to educate your children the best way. It's very costly. Maybe you can't do it through halal means. That love for your children is taking you towards haram. And now, what will be your end? If you are thrown in the fire of hell on the day of judgment due to the love of your sons or your wives or your parents or your brothers or your sisters or your nation, are they your enemies or friends? If there is Iman. If there is Iman, then the real life is the life of hereafter. That's the big if. If you really know that the real life is the life of the hereafter. If you really believe in the ayah that we read yesterday, Zalika Yawmut Tagabun, that is the day when it will be decided who was successful and who was a failure, who gained and who lost. That is the day of judgment. That is the day of decision. If it is so, if it is so, it's the big if, if you really believe in it, then all loves in you, they are a potential threat to your future, and they are the challengers to the love for Allah. It should be absolutely clear. And let me quote here the ayah number 24 of Surah At-Tawbah. Qul, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them, In kana abawukum, wa abnaukum, wa ikhwanukum, wa azwajukum, wa ashiratukum, wa amwalun iktarafto muha, wa tijaratun takshawna kasadaha, wa masakinu tardawnaha, ahabba ilaykum min allahi wa rasoolihi wa jihadin fi sabilihi. فَتَرَبَّسُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَحْدِ الْقَوْمُ الْفَاسِقِينَ Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Muslims, if your fathers and your sons and your brothers and your wives and your kith and kin, relatives, and the wealth that you have collected and amassed, and the business that you have established and now you feel about, you know, some recession in that business, you fear it. And the houses that you have made, constructed, and you love them, if the love for these eight things in your hearts is more than the love for Allah and His Messenger and Jihad in His cause, then go away, sit down, wait for the final judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَتَرَبَّسُوا حَتَّى يَعْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَحْدِ الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ Allah is not going to guide such people, such fusaq. A very bitter truth. You put, you know, on one side of the scale, eight loves in you. Love for father. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ أَبَاوْكُمْ for your sons, وَأَبْنَاوْكُمْ and your wives or, or your husbands, وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ and your brothers and your relatives, وَأَشِيرَتُكُمْ 
फाइव ब्लड और फ्लैश रिलेशन एंड थ्री थिंग्स रिगार्डिंग दी वेल्थ व अमवाल उन तरफ तो मुंह व तजारत उन तक शौना का सादा व मसाकिन तरदौन हाउ कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव एवरी थिंग हैज बिन एडिड put these eight things the love for these eight things in on one side of the scale and on the other side ahabba ilaikum min allah wa rasulihi wa jihadin fi sabilihi love for allah love for his messenger love for the jihad in his cause for iqamatul din to establish the din of allah now we if these eight you know they are heavier go don't talk to us فَتَرَبَّصُوا go and wait hatta yati allah bi amri till allah subhanahu wa taala declares his verdict wallahu la yadil qaum al fasiqi and allah is not going to guide to the right path such people who love these things more than those three things and allah ibbal he has very beautifully you know he has collected all these things इन वन मिश्रा वन कपलेट ये मालो दौलत दुनिया ये रिश्ता ओ पैबंद बुतान वह मुगुमा लाला मालो दौलत दुनिया द वेल्थ दैट यू हैव एमेस्ट द बिजनेस और प्रोफेशन दैट यू हैव एस्टेब्लिश्ड एंड द बिल्डिंग्स यू नो द लैंडेड प्रॉपर्टी और यू नो these houses etc these things lista o paywan father son brother wife or husband spouses and you know the close relatives ye maal o daulat e duniya ye rishta o paywan butane wahm o guma la ilaha illallah but this is actually qul in kana qul ya ayyuhal ladina amanu inna min azwajikum wa auladikum aduwwan lakum fahsaru these are potential enemies be aware of them be on the guard lest their love takes you away from the path of allah subhanahu wa taala lest their love should come in your way and prevent you from going to jihad lest their love persuades you to earn more through haram if you do it you are doomed Then what does it mean? Then they are your enemies. You might be doing it out of love for them, but they are your enemies because due to their love, your whole life here and after that is doomed. But you know the beauty of this ayah, the other part of ayah, is very balancing. Wa in taafu wa tasfahu wa taqfu. it shouldn't be the result of this ayah that now every home becomes you know a battle ground fighting with the wife and fighting and quarreling with the sons and daughters and all the relatives it shouldn't be the family and home it should be a place of love and affection not of fighting you keep on the guard beware lest their love takes you to the wrong path but you have to be you pardon them you forgive them three words are being used here synonymous wa in taafu wa tasfahu wa taghfiru af means to pardon to forgive saf means to overlook sometimes you see something your son is doing something wrong you have seen it but don't mention it safa just turn away just overlook number 3 wa taghfiru and ghafir means to cover something you know bighfar the arabs call you know this helmet which covers your head it's bighfar how a steel helmet to be used to protect your heads from you know sword coming so those helmets ghafar bighfar which is protecting your covering your head so ghafar you cover it cover their faults three words synonymous wa in taafu wa tasfahu wa taghfiru fa inna allaha ghafurur rahim allah is also forgiving allah is merciful be merciful to your sons and your wives or your kith and kin 
keep forgiving them go on pardoning them but be on the alert yourself there is a very beautiful saying of jesus alaihi salatu wassalam in the bible be cunning as a serpent but be harmless to others like a dove very beautiful you should be cunning you should be mindful don't let anybody exploit you or deceive you don't be sort of a simple turn as you call it that anybody can deceive and anybody can do harm no guard yourself be cunning as a serpent you know snake how cunning it is always you know very conscious from every side but be harmless to others just like a dove saap ke manind hoshiyar lekin faqta ke manind bezarar bano so that is the same case here think that in these potential loves that you have in your hearts whom you are loving on instincts love them have affection them for them but be on the guard lest their love takes you on the wrong path prevents you from doing what you should do as a mu'min as a muslim if they prevent you from making jihad for the cause of allah spending your money for the cause of allah then they are your enemies due to this love you will be doomed in the hereafter but here treat them gently softly because actually you have to train them you have to call them also to the right path of allah subhanahu wa taala so don't be don't you know make your home or your family a battleground wa in ta'fu wa tasfahu wa taghfiru fa inna allaha ghafurur rahim now the next aya inna ma amwalukum wa auladukum fitna the second result that should appear as a result of iman verily all of your wealth and all of your aulad your offspring are fitna for you what is fitna fitna in arabic means actually something on which something is tested you test you know the gold whether it is pure or not whether there is any impurity rubbing it on some some stone that is fitna you are rubbing it but only to see whether it is pure or impure so all the conditions which are painful to men but then they are tried they are tried through those conditions whether they believe in allah or not whether they have trust in allah or not whether they believe in the hereafter or not all those conditions are fitna whether they are of persecution allah subhanahu wa taala has given you wealth it is a fitna he is testing you what you are what you do with this wealth you use them in luxuries you use your money to show off your wealth to others or you use your money to earn the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa taala you spend your money for the cause of allah for the propagation of the message of allah subhanahu wa taala to the humanity you are spending your money or wealth for the establishment of the deen of allah just as hazrat usman radhiyallahu ta'ala an hazrat abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala an they had money they had wealth but they spent it where in luxuries no for the cause of allah so actually wealth is also testing you have been given sons and you are on the trial what are you thinking about, about them have you ever thought about their hereafter all your thinking and concern about your sons and daughters is for this world they must get some training and education so that they can pursue a career with which they can lead a respectable life in this world and that's all it means you don't believe in the hereafter you are a liar if you say that you believe in the hereafter had you really believed in the hereafter your first concern about your sons and daughters would be to save them from the fire of hell ya ayyuhal ladina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara the last surah of this collection surah at tahrim has this aya oh you who believe try to save yourselves and your families from the fire of the hell you are thinking only about their futures in this world 
You believe in this world, this life, not the life hereafter. So that is actually, you are being tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you sons and daughters and he will see how you have brought them up. Did you try your best to bring them up as Muslims and Mormons? As bondmen of Allah? As servants of his deen? Or you have only, you know, cared for them, for their worldly needs and nothing else. It has proved that you actually don't believe in Allah. You actually don't believe in the hereafter. Had that been there, your first and foremost concern would have been for their deen, for their morals, for their behavior in this life. You must have taught them Quran and deen, first of all. Innama amwalukum wa auladukum fitna. So this is the attitude that a woman has to take. I am being tested. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me is as if it's a question paper which I have to answer. What I am writing on my paper. What I am trying to make of my son. What I am trying to make of my daughter. What am I using my money for? It's a test. And please note here, Aulad has been included in both. In the first ayah, Ya ayu alladheena amanu inna min azwaajikum wa auladikum aduwal lakum. And in the second ayah, inna ma amwalikum wa auladikum fitna. Why Aulad has been included both? Because Aulad, the offsprings, especially the sons, they become a hope for the future. Just as you have the hope in your money, you trust in wealth for your old age. You are trusting for some saving for the old age. In the same way, one is hoping that the son would support him when he is old. While Allah says, don't have trust in anybody except me. Allah la ilaha illallah wa ala Allah falyatawakkal almu'minun You shouldn't trust you shouldn't have any trust Don't trust well if the if the sons are dutiful towards their parents it's good for them They will earn the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment But you don't have you know the trust in them you have your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Aulad is fitna you must prove yourself that you have done what you should have done for your Allah. From the point of view of Iman and from the point of view of Deen. And from the point of view of the life that is the real life. The real life is the life of hereafter, not this one. Now these are the five ayat in which the whole revolution of feeling and thinking Whatever is coming to you, whatever actions and deeds are coming out of you, what should be your point of view regarding the relations, blood and flesh relations, what should be your point of view regarding the means of living in this world, the wealth, the material means. <coughs> Iman changes the whole scenario of a person, whosoever has faith in Allah, who has the faith in the life hereafter, his attitude would be absolutely different. His thinking and feeling should be absolutely different from those who don't believe in Allah, who don't believe in the life hereafter. Now these are the facts. These are the inevitable results of real Iman. And as I told you yesterday, keep these five things before you and you can have a self-assessment whether we have the Iman or not. How much Iman we have and where we are lacking. Everybody can have a self-assessment. Now there is the call. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَسْتَطَعْتُ So be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And keep him in your mind. You know taqwa, we shall discuss it later on at some other place. To translate it as have fear of Allah. It's not a good translation at all. For fear, the definite word in Arabic is khawf, and we have in, in Quran khawf. 
salat khafu hum wa khafu ni don't fear them fear me this khauf is also an arabic word we have it in the quran that why something else to keep allah always in your mind to be always conscious of the presence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be always mindful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this taqwa you know it can have an element of fear also but the positive side is love you don't want to offend your father you don't want to injure his feelings but it is due to love that you have for him in the same way don't disobey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually it is out of love for him but you know there is also there should be fear of his you know punishment but not only fear a wholesome attitude of real conviction in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he is there if he is present in your consciousness always at the conscious level then it is taqwa and the prophet has been reported to have said at taqwa ha huna taqwa is always here in the heart if it is in the heart then it will permeate the whole of your body and personality it will be apparent also from the shape and form that you take from the dress that you are wearing whether it is according to the sharia or not whether it is in conformity with the requirements of the sharia or not whether you are following the prophet or not whether you want to copy the example of the prophet or not this will also be a mayor of taqwa but the real taqwa is in your heart in your behavior in your attitude even when you are alone nobody is seeing you if there is taqwa actually it should be there if it there it is in the heart then it should be there also when you are absolutely alone taqwa allah fi sidr wal alania so with taqwa you know fattaqullah ma istata'tum you have to have taqwa as much as you can go on increasing it this god consciousness remaining mindful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at every moment try it never try try it never to forget him he should be there in your heart and your or your conscious mind all the time and then wasmau wa ti'u and then listen and obey now here i want to have this two ahadith i want to refer this listen and obey because these things have absolutely disappeared from our thinking about religion and islam at all please read this hadith and please try it. as many of uh, uh, many of you as can remember it by heart memorize it ali al haris al ashari radhiyallahu ta'ala an it has been reported from al haris al ashari radhiyallahu ta'ala an qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amurukum bi khamsin bil jama'ati was sam'i wat ta'ati wal hijrati wal jihad fi sabil I am commanding you I am ordering you five things and there is another hadith in which additional words are Allah has given me these commandments I am not doing it on my own you have to be in the form of a jamaat and that jamaat that party should have the discipline of samata listen and obey the proverbial discipline of the army there's not to reason why there's but to do and die now what is for him for whom first of all listen to allah and obey him but how to listen to allah when you are reading quran you are listening to allah number 2 listen to the prophet and obey him how do you do it you learn the sunnah the hadith and obey it. and then till such time that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was alive in this world he had to be obeyed as the amir of that jamaa also because it was he actually who was the commander in the battle it was he who was the head of the state and after him now you must be in the form of a party either there is an islamic state and you have to obey and listen the head of that islamic state the amirul mu'minin the khalifa 
or if there is not an Islamic state, then you have to form a party. Because without a party you cannot endeavor, you cannot try to have establish an Islamic state. And then you have to have that attitude of listen and obey to the chief of that party, to the amir of that party. So this is actually a chain. No time in the life of a mu'min can be without samuta'ah. At the time of the Prophet, it was samuta'ah for him. And during the, the pious caliphate, it was samuta'ah for Abu Bakr, Umar, Usman, Ali, radiallahu ta'ala, al -Mad Then you know afterwards, you have to have a party to establish that deen and that khilafah. And you have to have the same attitude of samuta'ah for that the leader of that party, the amir of that party. I wanted to give you another hadith also, but because the time is over, I'll give it a, tomorrow, inshallah. This is the most important topic. And because, you know, a few points more have been left about this lesson. So before going to the next lesson, the next lesson tomorrow will be the ayat from 30 to 36 of, or 35, of 36, of Surah Hami Basajda. And before that, inshallah, I'll discuss a few points that have been left over of this lesson. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'ayri al-muslimin wa al-muslimat.